Hey what's up and welcome back to the channel this is the program geek and in today's video we're gonna be focusing on one concrete design module as you may remember in the previous videos we focused or talked briefly about all the concrete design modules which are in this analysis and design suite for Procon. but in today's video we need to single out one and in this case I've decided to choose C15 which is the base or rectangular column design base design module so some of you may be asking why have I chosen this is because you remember when you're analyzing you start from the top going down but when you're designing you start from the bottom going up so what we're going to do is we're going to use this one start from the bases then we move to the columns move to the music slabs then come back to the sections and then later on we do pre-stressed or post-staged concrete because before you do anything that is post-staged you need to understand something that is not pre-stressed or post-staged as more equations become evolved but now Without wasting too much time, let's just click on our module and get started. Okay, so the first thing that happens when you open your concrete or column based design module, which is the C15 module, this is the screen that you're greeted on, which is on the screen. Now remember, the column based design module is used to design and optimize rectangular and circular column bases and now it's also pads compatible as you can see right now it is blade but what i'll do is i'll just play ulS to create an example you will see that you have the capability right to create a bending schedule which you can then transport to pads which is the one under the cad and detailing menu where you can further detail it and finish it off so that you can present it and take it to site now going back to the user in input interface that you see we now need to talk about the theory and the basis so that you best understand how, what is this program asking you and what it needs when it opens up. Okay, so we had to clear everything from the skin so that we start afresh. So everything has been removed. So we start afresh. So first thing, first point is that you need to remember is we are in demo mode. So the FCU for the base will always be limited to 15. So now we can do all that. But even if you don't have demo mode and use it a full license, then you have more room to play around with this. If you're using demo, remember you can always request for a student license from program from the program software consultants website. And remember, I'm not a program software consultant. I do not work for program, but I'm just here to just help you share this knowledge and help you understand the software. Even in demo, if you want, you can request a free trial license or even reach out to them and get a student license if you are a student. Now that we have talked about this, let's get into the design scope and theory behind this module. So first things first, what you need to understand is that the program designs rectangular and circular concrete column bases subjected to vertical forces, that is just the axial uh, compression and also by axial and bending moments. And also it can also design even if you have horizontal loads or horizontal forces which will be subjected to it. And if you go down to the screen, if you see there is HX, right? And also, if you go up there, there's HY. These will be the horizontal loads in the Y and X plane, respectively. Now, this program, what it does is that it designs the base at an ultimate limit state when it comes to bending moment and the shear, right? And when it comes to serviceability or settling, it, it designs it to the serviceability limit state. Also, you need to understand the program verifies the stability requirements for overturning and bearing pressure such that these ones can be performed at ultimate limit state or using the working force method. Right. Now, as I told you previously in that example, the reinforcement for the bending schedules can be generated for the design basis and these schedules can be opened in pads for further editing and printing. Now, you may be asking me what codes of practice are supported by this program. Now, if you want to check the program codes, all you can do or design code, just go to the design code that you would want. All you have to do, let me just repeat, go to the pads button, then go to design code. And over there, you have a list of codes that you can select that you would want to use. In this case, if you're from America, you can use the ACI. If you're from the British or former British colony, you can use the British standards, right? Or the code of practice. And if you're from Europe or anywhere else that uses the Euro code, you can use the Euro code 2, 2004. And if you're from Asia, you can use the Hong Kong Concrete 2004 and you have 2013. If you're from India, Namaste, you can use the Indian standards 4, 5, 6, 2000. And if you're from New Zealand or Australia, you can use the New Zealand standards 331 or 1, 2006. 
And if you're from the motherland, South Africa, you can use 01000 from 2000. Peace to the motherland. Support you, brothers. Now, the next thing, what you can do is you can select what any code that you want to be a preference. And if you want to save this, the current analysis as your preferred setting, you can just click save, click OK. And automatically that will be, if you go down there, it will always say this is now the code that you'll be using. Now, don't worry. It will always say BS8110 if you're using the SABS because the SABS was taken from the British standards. Remember, the Dutch and the British. Now, having talked about the British codes or the design codes rather, the next thing is you asking me about the units. Yes, you can always change the units to whatever you want. You can choose from metric to imperial depending on where you are. But to be honest, if you're not from the United States, you're not going to be using imperial. So you can always stick to metric. Yes, that is me just trying to fake my American accent. But yep, it is what it is. So click OK. Choose on the metrics that you want. In this case, we're going to metric. And that is the unit of measurement that we are going to be using. Next thing that we now need to focus on is the list of symbols that is in this module or the input sections. Okay, having talked about that and having said this, you need to understand that there are three main sections to the inputs that you need to provide. First of all, you have the geometry input sections, which I'll just highlight right now. Then you have the materials input section, which I'll also highlight. And then you have the section that allows you to set the check-in, uh, the correct characteristics that you will need to use for checking overturning at ultimate limit state but generally we call this the setting of the stability criteria where you put your factors and everything that relates to the stability checks so these are the three main sections when it comes just to the input but then you also have a fourth section right which is the unfected load section which one is the one that allows you to input all your loads that you want and in this case you can either put the extra load that is going to be acting from the column, then the horizontal loads, which is HX and HY, and also if there are any moments that will be acting on the column at the connection for the base, you can also put as MX or MY. And the next thing that is cool about this design module is that it can allow you to optimize your design based on the cost of the materials. So what it has, it is this section called the optimize section where you can put, in this case, you can put the price of concrete, say, per cubic meter, right? Whether it's in rands, US dollars, pounds, euros, it's all up to you, or even rupees. And then you have the reinforcement pattern. You can also put it in whatever value you use. So it could be good to use US dollars as they're the reserve currency of the world, right? The greenback. But then that's all up to you, depending on what you want, where you're designing from. And once you enter this too, you can now go to where it says optimize design actions. So what it will do by selecting optimize dimension A and dimension B, it will try and optimize the length of your bases so that it doesn't cost too much depending on what you have put in there. And then it can also optimize A, B and Y. What it will just do is that it will try and optimize the area and the height of your column depending on what you put. So this is a cool function for you. You could put the initial design and then you can also then do a run check to see if you can optimize it and produce the most economical design for yourself. That will be good for you. All right. Okay. Now that we have discussed everything that we could, firstly, for when it comes to the theory and everything, we really need to understand this module and we really need to look at an example so that we better increase or grasp what this module can do for us when it comes to the design and detailing of column based design. So to do that, remember, we have this amazing example of ours or layouts that we have. What I'll do is I'll provide a link in the description below with a link to this AutoCAD so that you can download it and follow along as we do everything. This is the same AutoCAD that I've been using for the previous videos. And as you can see, you even have the strap beams. So even when I increase anything or update this, I'll leave a link in the description so that you can always get this file and we can follow along. So what we're going to do is remember we have this basis. We're going to try and model each one of our bases, one from the normal footing and one from the strap footing. So you see how it goes and base. And after we have inputted the design so that you understand where this one is coming from. And we also discuss more of this in depth. What we will do is then after the design, let me just click on example. No. And we'll then talk about everything that we that is there when it comes to the stability checks, shear checks, moment checks, and we'll explain them. But to best explain them, we'll need an example. So what we're going to do is we're going to wrap the video at this point, And now we're going to move at inputting the data and seeing how we can do with one example. And in this case, we'll start off with 
a column that only has an actual load does not have hy hx mx and m1 so without wasting too much time let's wrap this video and i'll see you in the very next tutorial